Hello, I'm Fraser. I'm uh, going to talk about Free IPA, which is an open source identity management solution. So first a bit about me, I'm a developer at Red Hat and I work on the identity management team. Uh, in particular I'm focused on the dog tag uh, pub public key infrastructure and uh, the features that we want to implement there for use cases in Free IPA. Uh, I have a development blog, um, URLs there, and my Twitter. This is going to be um, a really content heavy talk, I'm going to move quickly. Hopefully I can get people a bit interested in free IPA. Um, I want to leave a bit of time at the end for questions, um, but I just want to warn you up front, um, we're going to move fast and we're not going to be able to kind of go deep on many of the topics. It is uh, very um, kind of all-inclusive broad software. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at what is identity management, uh, an introduction to free IPA, including what its features are and a little bit about how it's deployed, uh, the architecture overview, and then a roadmap, what's um, coming up uh, in future releases, both near term and longer term. So identity management is uh, described by Wikipedia in the following way. Identity management describes the management of individual principles, their authentication, authorization, and privileges within or across system and enterprise boundaries with the goal of increasing security and productivity while decreasing cost, downtime and repetitive tasks. Okay, that's a mouthful. Uh, let's break it down a bit. So what are identities uh, or principles? These are things like uh, users in an organisation, uh, services, so web services um, or databases or who knows what, uh, hosts, so actual physical systems and groups of all of the above. Uh, authentication is things like passwords and password policies, uh, two-factor authentication, single sign-on systems, um, certificate authentication, for example. Authorization, these are, uh, in the free IPA context, uh, identity-related policies. So what is an identity allowed to do or allowed to access? And finally, uh, management concerns. So how, how do we manage all of this stuff in a large organisation, you know, for uh, a handful of machines, a sysadmin can, you know, go and manage Etsy password and, and uh, do it all themselves. Scale up to tens of machines, that becomes quite burdensome. Scale up to thousands of machines, um, forget about it, you're going to need a centralised identity management solution. So some of the technologies in this space are LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, um, so these are directory server databases. Kerberos, which is a uh, secure but centralised authentication system with a key distribution centre as kind of the um, central authority uh, for the authentication. X509, uh, so public key infrastructure, digital certificates. Um, this is the infrastructure that powers things like SSL or TLS on the web. Uh, DNS, domain, domain name system, so name resolution. And uh, network file systems for a kind of network based storage, um, you know, mounting user home directories on different systems they log into, for example. So, free IPA. Uh, what is it? It's not free beer, unfortunately, but it's free as in beer, and uh, it is also free as in freedom. Uh, free IPA stands for Identity Policy and Not Audit. Um, originally, it was going to include audit, um, but at the moment, that's kind of been put into the too hard basket slash don't have the resources slash not quite sure if there aren't better solutions and maybe down the track we're just going to look at ways of exporting audit data into other systems. Um, but nevertheless, the uh, vestigial A remains. Uh, so it's a centralised identity management suite uh, with a simple web UI and CLI. The idea is that we want to hide the complexity and also provide some user self-service facilities. Uh, there's a focus on ease of deployment and enrolment of systems and there's Active Directory integration. And this is very important because uh, most businesses and many organisations are already using Active Directory for all of their um, kind of enterprise user management. And so um, if you have an organisation like that that wants to have a, a Unix group as well, uh, you need nice ways to integrate um, these two systems. It looks uh, a bit like this. Well, it, it looks exactly like this, but this is just one screen. Um, so you can see up the top, uh, identity policy, authentication, so these are the main kind of topics. 
uh, under the identity heading, uh, which is where we're looking, we've got users, groups, um, hosts, net groups, services, etc. And uh, you can see there's a list. It, it appears to be quite bootstrappy, I think. I don't know, I'm not a UI guy, but someone said, oh, you're using bootstrap. And I'm like, OK, well, whatever, it looks nice. Um, I've certainly seen a lot worse. Um, so the main components of FreeIPA are the 389 directory server, which is the main database that uh, FreeIPA and various related services uh, uses. The MIT Kerberos key distribution center for Kerberos authentication. Uh, the dog tag certificate system uh, manages the certificates for the uh, hosts and services that are enrolled in a free IPA domain and uh, in the future we're going to be uh, able to produce user certificates as well for client authentication. Uh, there are other CAs supported as well so you don't have to use dog tag but it's, it's the default and one of the um, best supported options there. Uh, the Apache HTTP daemon, uh, which serves up the uh, web UI that we saw on the previous slide, and bind for the DNS uh, capabilities of the system. So authentication features uh, include password policies, Kerberos ticket policies, so for example, how long is the ticket valid for? Uh, ticket valid for. Uh, Kerberos over HTTP is quite a new feature as well, so you can um, proxy connections um, over uh, an HTTP. Uh, connection, which is important for if you are kind of outside your corporate firewall and um, on someone's Wi-Fi network and you can't get through on port 88, um, you can go through uh, on port 443. One-time password uh, facilities built in, so we've got native uh, hash-based or time-based OTP and also external um, token systems via a RADIUS proxy. And uh, also within the kind of sphere of um, the Red Hat identity management team, we've produced the free OTP uh, mobile app, which is kind of a free uh, replacement for Google Authenticator. And we have YubiKey support as well. And uh, we also do SSH key management. So uh, you can have your, um, what's it called, Author authorized keys. <coughs> authorized keys, uh, yeah, managed on different systems. Um, so users can authenticate in that way, but it still hooks into the PAM stack for authorization. So whether this person is actually allowed to log into the system or not. Users and groups, uh, we have automatic group membership rules. And so um, different kinds of access policies can uh, be either directly for a user or via a group. Uh, sudo integration, SE Linux user roles, auto mounts, so um, rules for mounting user home directories on different systems, for example and uh, role-based access control, which is more of an internal concern for free IPA. So you can assign administrator roles to users, which makes them a free IPA administrator, and they can control um, you know, all of these uh, properties for different users or services. Hosts, host groups, uh, net groups. So there's one command host enrollment via IPA client install. Uh, automatic DNS records. Uh, the DNS is optional, but highly encouraged. And uh, we have DNS sec support uh, as of the recently released uh, free IPA 4.1. Host-based access control rules, uh, automatic host group membership, and SSH known hosts management as well. So just like you can manage the authorized keys for a system, um, you can manage known hosts. So people uh, enrolled in a free IPA domain uh, aren't going to get those uh, messages, oh, you know, do you want to connect to this one? It's already going to know about it. Services are first-class identities in free IPA. Uh, we have Kerberos key tab management for those services to make it easy to Kerberize them. So uh, a user um, who's got a Kerberos ticket granting ticket on a host can uh, just, well, access the service using that ticket without having to put in a password or anything. Uh, certificate provisioning via CertMonger. So CertMonger is a certificate management service, which can provision and indeed automatically <coughs> renew certificates uh, as they approach their expiry time. SSSD is a client daemon. It uh, stands for the System Security Services daemon. It connects uh, a Unix client to a central identity store. Um, it's not specific to Linux, um, nor is it specific to free IPA. So it's available on pretty much all the Linux distros and on FreeBSD. And for identity stores, it supports FreeIPA, Active Directory, and bare LDAP. So you can just provide your <coughs> details of the LDAP server. 
but it knows about free IPA and Active Directory and can enable uh, special features for those identity stores. Um, there's support for uh, credential caching, so if your KDC goes down or if you're offline, you'll still be able to log into the system and, and get your work done. The way it works is via um, PAM and NSS modules. Um, so when you install the, uh, when you run IPA client install, it'll do some PAM stack reconfiguration to make sure that um, requests to PAM and NSS go through SSSD, and that's what allows it to um, to do this job. And there's a fairly limited at this time uh, DBus API for controlling the behaviour of this daemon. On the Active Directory integration front, uh, we have support for Cross Realm trusts. So this allows uh, users uh, in an organisation to be managed in Active Directory and access hosts, uh, services and groups in Free IPA. Um, sorry, or you can manage your host services and groups in Free IPA. So this allows the Active Directory users to access those hosts and services. Um, you can also have POSIX attributes uh, stored in Active Directory or kind of uh, worked out or inferred via the views feature. Uh, again, there's simple configuration. Uh, there's no Active Directory specific host or service configuration required. Uh, you don't need to synchronize data uh, between your Active Directory and your free IPA domains. And there's no additional software needed on the Active Directory domain controller. For supporting legacy clients uh, that may m not have SSSD support, um, and can't connect, obviously, to Active Directory and Free IPA identity stores simultaneously, we provide a compatibility tree. Um, so that's a single LDAP tree um, that kind of abstracts both of those identity stores. And uh, when you perform an authentication against that tree, if it's a Free IPA user, that's going to be uh, intercepted and the bind is going to be done to the Free IPA tree. But if it's an Active Directory user, that intercepted LDAP bind uh, will actually be, uh, become an uh, Active Directory authentication process uh, via SSSD on the server, which is probably, yeah, it's a little bit to wrap your head around, but it's a really cool, really useful feature if you have, for example, old Solaris clients or older, older hosts that don't have the uh, newer SSSD that knows about Active Directory. Um, it's a way to enable uh, access to all of these hosts and uh, authentication uh, through the one tree. Uh, for deploying the free IPA server, we support Fedora, RHEL and CentOS and um, I've written there that it's on its way to Debian and Ubuntu, but it's actually just landed in Debian a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Ubuntu uh, should be, I think, in the next release and then backported to 14.04 is the plan. Um, but there's one guy at Canonical kind of working on that in his free time. So um, if you're interested in better support, I'm sure he would love testing and uh, love some help there. Uh, there's a one command to install the server. It's just IPA server install, answer some questions, wait a few minutes, and it's done. It's all up and running. And it's a little bit more work to set up a replica, so we recommend that um, there be a replication topology uh, with multiple masters. So you run IPA replica prepare, which is going to inform um, a master about the new replica that you want to add uh, to the topology. Then you uh, take the output file it generates, copy it to the host that is to become the replica, and run IPA replica install uh, with that file as an argument, and it will go and set it up, um, establish all of the uh, replication agreements, and bring up the servers so you're up and running. For client enrollment, there's a single command, IPA client install. Uh, again, with a focus on uh, ease of deployment, there's just a single command there. Answer some questions, wait a few minutes, um, it's, it's done. Uh, there are options for unattended install, and what it does is it basically configures SSSD and related services like PAM, uh, NSS, SSHD, and so on to take advantage of all of the free IPA features. There's also integration with some provisioning systems such as Satellite, uh, OpenLMI, which is Open Linux Management Infrastructure, I think, and uh, Foreman Smart Proxy. So, architecture. Uh, High-level architecture. Well, 
Over here we have the free IPA server with the HTTP and the certificate authority and the KDC and uh, the main uh, directory server that all of those things talk to. Um, the administrator lives, well, he's over here, he can administrate um, the free IPA domain via the web UI or a command, <coughs> excuse me, command line interface um, or an API. Active Directory um, identity store over here with a Kerberos Cross Realm Trust. So these Windows users can actually get access to the free IPA services and hosts. And uh, here are the IPA enrolled um, hosts with SSSD and this guy doesn't has it, have SSSD so he's probably using the compatibility tree. The SSSD architecture, as you can see, there's the uh, PAM and the NSS responders. Clients here are on the one host. They're not network clients. They're um, client programs running on the host um, using the facilities that NSS and PAM provide. Um, there's a cache and then there's the domain provider with identity provider and authentication provider. And there's a network boundary and, and these guys live over here. So this is free IPA, for example, or Active Directory, or both, because it, SSSD can support multiple identity stores. Um, there's a lot going on on this particular architecture diagram. But basically, this is your uh, free IPA server with your KDC, uh, the directory server, bind for the DNS, um, the dog tag PKI. A host lives over here, so it's got SSSD, CertMunga for certificate provisioning and renewal, and uh, your IPA client commands, and a management station, again, command line interface, web UI, or um, using the um, RPC APIs. Um, this is the breakdown, I'm just gonna fly through this so that we have more time for questions. Okay, so the roadmap, uh, what's on the horizon? Short-term efforts, uh, DNSSEC, uh, automatic CA certificate renewal, so when your CA certificate expires, um, that can be renewed and pushed out to the clients. Uh, backup and restore scripts, uh, the updated web UI, so the one that you saw is the new uh, web UI. Uh, improved perm permissions and fine-grained read access, so in Free IPA 3, um, we had a situation where basically anyone could read anything, but um, there was fine-grained write access, so that's been improved so that the read access is also fine-grained. Uh, integration with the Red Hat support portal, and uh, all of these features are available in SSSD 1.12 and FreeIPA 4.1, um, and are being considered for release in uh, RHEL 7.1. Longer-term efforts, uh, enforcing stronger authentication for select services, so this is the idea where, well, you know, for these services or hosts, um, as long as they've authenticated, you know, with, with Kerberos or whatever, that's fine, we'll let them in. But for these ones over here, um, these are a bit more kind of um, sensitive or mission critical, so we're going to require uh, two-factor authentication. So um, that's the idea of the uh, Kerberos CAMAC slash authentication indicator um, capability, and we want to leverage that in free IPA and provide nice ways to manage those rules. Kerberos on mobile devices, um, so yeah, Kerberos, well, what it says, um, authentication on a mobile device. Um, the HTTP proxy is going to make that a lot easier now. DNS sec improvements, uh, SSSD smart card login, so if you have a smart card, being able to use that um, to log into the system. Customizable uh, X509 certificate profiles and user certificate provisioning are features that I'll be working on and I'm currently doing uh, a lot of the low level work in the dog tag PKI to support these free IPA use cases. Password Vault is a key and secret store and users um, have a self-service there. So they can go and um, securely store their passwords or, or keys or other secrets. And uh, the free, oh sorry, this is really a sub point of this one. Um, it's a free IPA front end to a feature that's actually part of the uh, dog tag certificate system called the key recovery manager. But yes, we're gonna provide um, nice interfaces and, and ways to manage that. On the integration front, uh, we're looking at integration with the cloud forms uh, management interface. Uh, Docker support, so support for SSSD and free IPA running in containers. 
um, that you can then use the uh, images that we provide and add new apps to them and be able to leverage the client capabilities. Uh huh. Yes, yeah, it's up on, on Docker Hub, um, but we're definitely looking at ways to improve that. Um, the, the gentleman who's been doing that work is Jan, and his last name starts with P, and I dare not attempt to pronounce it. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to get in touch with him or try out the um, images and give feedback, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, OpenStack integration, so looking at ways to integrate uh, Keystone. Uh, which is an authorization service for OpenStack Barbican, which is a secret store, and Designate, which is going to be a uh, DNS component of OpenStack. Uh, OpenShift Origin, which is the uh, platform as a service. You might have seen Katie's talk or uh, gone to her tutorial for uh, OpenShift. So we're looking at ways to um, be able to integrate OpenShift um, with free IPA. Um, OpenShift, if you don't know, there's a few different tiers. So there's an enterprise tier. So if there's an enterprise using um, free IPA or possibly looking at using it, uh, along with OpenShift, we want to make that integration easy. Calamari, which is a Ceph management platform, um, and your project. Do you have a project that um, you think would be worthwhile being able to integrate nicely with uh, free IPA identity management suite? If so, um, let's get the conversation started. So in conclusion, Free IPA is an advanced open source identity management suite. Uh, it has a focus on ease of deployment and administration. The, I, the um, value there is in reducing the cost of uh, managing your domain. Active Directory integration allows you to avoid uh, duplication of identities um, and efforts surrounding the maintenance of identity um, providers and that allows you to have a more cost-effective identity management infrastructure within your organisation. Um, so we encourage you to try it out. Um, there's been a lot of successful deployments already. Uh, in fact, just in the last month, um, the GNOME project moved uh, all of their account system to free IPA, and there's a few blog posts about that. Um, so if you're looking for case studies for uh, free software projects, that's probably a great place to start and to ask questions. Uh, we want you to tell us about your use cases and uh, we can help out uh, wherever we can. Um, you can get online on IRC or the mailing list. There's going to be a list of them in a slide or two. There's also a uh, demo app that you can go and uh, actually fiddle around with the free IPA interface and enroll hosts. Um, and try it out and it's just a sandbox. It gets blown away every 24 hours and, uh, and refreshed. Um, so this URL is not actually the instance, but it has the links to it along with additional information about um, yeah, playing in the sandbox, I guess. So resources, uh, we've got the main website, uh, an integration guide for Kerberizing your web applications, uh, mailing lists, so there's users, and deval. Um, so if you have any general questions, users, if you actually want to get involved in development or submit patches um, or kind of specific uh, requests for enhancement, that would be the place to go. And uh, there's also the low traffic free IPA interest, which mainly has release announcements and release notes. Free IPA on Freenode is the IRC channel. And uh, yeah, the demo page again. And uh, SSSD development as well. Um, there's mailing lists. SSSD users, SSSD devel, and uh, I'm sure there's an IRC channel that couldn't be too difficult to find for SSSD. Um, attribution, I didn't draw those diagrams. I really suck at diagrams. So thanks, Dimitri and Martin, and copyright, etc. Okay, are there any questions? Yes? One quick one. Um, you said free IPA has a DNS component. Um, are you using this only for static, um, statically enrolled hosts, or do you deal with machines that change their IP addresses via HTTP2? Uh, great question. I'm not actually sure, but if I was to guess, it probably I, I'm not aware of any facility for handling roaming IPs. Um, 
so yeah, in saying that, I'm not absolutely confident that it's not there, but I've, I doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any other questions? Thanks.